Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I give you Adnan Rashid. Also, Christian missionaries have been using another strategy to defend the Bible, and that is by mocking Islam, mocking the Muslims, mocking the Prophet of Islam. This strategy is also not working because the Bible still remains corrupt. This is not a defense of the Bible. By mocking Islam and the Prophet of Islam or the religion of Islam, the Bible is not suddenly going to become uncorrupted. So this is a very important point I wanted to raise. Mockery, mockumentaries, okay, uh, laughing and joking and sarcasm is not going to take away our arguments and our belief. We will continue to love Islam and our Prophet as we always did. And it is a condition of faith for the Muslims to love our Prophet. Now, when Christian missionaries want to take the message of the gospel, the loving message of the gospel to the Muslims, how do you love someone by insulting someone they love? Imagine if I came to Christian missionaries and the first thing I said, your mother is X, Y, and Z. Would they listen to me? Would they give me a willing ear? Will they ever listen to what I have to say about God Almighty and the love I would be claiming for them? They would never listen to me. So you do not take the message of love to someone by hating on people they love. So this is a very important point I wanted to highlight very quickly in the beginning. All right, so Adnan's position is <laughs> that we right. shouldn't be making fun of <laughs> Muhammad because, you know, if you're making fun of Muhammad, that's, that's no way to reach people. You can't reach people by making fun of their religious beliefs or by making fun of someone that they love. Now, I'll just go ahead and start off here, Adnan, by saying that if your prophet didn't want us making fun of him, he shouldn't have done a lot of different things. He shouldn't have had sex with a nine-year-old girl. He shouldn't have walked around covered in semen so that his, his child bride had to constantly scrape the semen off him. He shouldn't yeah. have had his yeah. followers uh, sucking on each other's fingers. He shouldn't have allowed his followers to hire prostitutes. He shouldn't have taken the wife of his own adopted son. Um, he shouldn't have uh, swore an oath to stop having sex with his slave girl and then come back and said, uh, oh, uh, yeah, Allah says I need to break that oath. Allah's ordering me to break that oath. Uh, shouldn't have delivered the satanic verses, shouldn't have gone around saying that he's a victim of a magic spell that gives him delusional thoughts and false beliefs. He shouldn't have done basically anything that he did if he didn't want us making fun of him. How are we supposed to ignore all the hilarious stuff that he did and just keep quiet about that, right? We can't, we can't hold that kind of, uh, uh, that, that kind of, we can't hold in that, that much laughter, right? It, it, it's impossible. But all of that aside, all of that aside, Sam. Yes, sir. Did Adnan just once again become an apostate? Yes, Adnan yeah, became an apostate again? Yes. Oh, I have I, got I have got to hear this. How did Adnan yeah. just apostatize again? He does it every I, clip, every not just every video, every portion of every video. He apostatizes yet again. How did he do it this time? I just want to glorify Jesus Christ for raising people like you to expose the truth because Adnan, your career is over, your religion is over, you decimated Muhammad. Why? Let me show you how Muhammad treated unbelievers. I'm going to quote Muhammad and Abu Bakr's examples from the sources written by Muslims, not Jews or Christians. Okay, let me show you how Muhammad spoke. This comes from Mishqat al-Masabi. Guys, all of this you'll find in our articles on answeringislam.net, answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. Now, this comes from Mishqat al-Masabi. <clears throat> I'm reading the English translation by... <clears throat> James Robson, and it's page two, 1021, volume 2. Page 1021 of volume 2. So this is in one of my articles. Pay attention, folks, what Muhammad says. Ubay bin Kaab told that he heard Allah's messenger. It says God's messenger, but I prefer to say Allah. Allah's messenger say, if anyone proudly asserts his descent in the manner of this pre-Islamic people, tell him to bite his father's penis and not, do not use a euphemism. Let me read that one more time, David. Tell him to bite his father's penis and do not use a euphemism. Say it graphically. Insult that man. Tell oh. him, go bite your father's penis, dude. Hold on, Sam. Hold on, Sam. Didn't these people love their fathers? 
Of course they did. And yet Anand says that us criticizing Muhammad would be like, you know, walking up to someone and trying to reach them and then talking about their moms. But Muhammad specifically orders his followers to, to talk about the people's dads and even to bite their penises. I can't believe no. that this actually came from the Prophet of oh. Islam. But can I show you what Muhammad's best friend, according to Sunnis, who became the first Caleb said to the unbelievers? Uh, I've, I've, got to, no. I've got to hear this. You got to this one because this one, man, I was like, man, I was Abu Bakr, bro, man, you and me maybe could have, you know, chilled. I like that attitude you got, player. But anyway, this comes from the English translation of the history of Al-Tabari, the victor of Islam, volume 8, page 76. Then Urwa said, Muhammad, tell me if you extirpate your tribesmen, have you ever heard of any of the Arabs who destroyed his own race before you? And if the contrary comes to pass... By God, by Allah, I see both prominent people and rabble who are likely to flee and leave you. Pa Abu pa 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 said, pause there, pause there, Sam, pause there, Sam, because I want people to understand how reasonable that was. So one of the pagans, one of the pagans says to Muhammad, hey, Muhammad, look, you're, you're, you're going to war against us. There are, only two, there are only two possibilities here. Either you win or you lose. If you win, then you've, you've exterminated your own people. Do you really want to go down in history as someone who exterminated his own people? So that's one possibility. The other possibility is you lose, in which case your followers will, will abandon you and they'll recognize they shouldn't be following you. Either way, this doesn't look good for you, man. So just stop yeah. attacking us. That's what he's yeah. saying. Seems like a very reasonable point. Now, Sam, show us the incredibly reasonable manner that Abu Bakr responded. Abu Bakr, who's one of the rightly guided caliphs in Islam, and surely he, too, is a pattern of conduct worthy of Muslim uh, 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 imitation. Here is the standard that Muslims must follow, a standard that puts us Christians to shame. Abu Bakr said, Go suck the clitoris of Alat. Let me repeat it again. Go suck the clitoris of Alat. And then it says, Alat was the idol of uh, Thaqif which they used to worship, would we flee and leave him? Now, I want to read this one source because it comes from Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab at Tamimi. Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab at Tamimi. He combines these two traditions to show that Muslims are justified to insult people. He combines these two traditions to show that Muslims are justified in insulting people. It comes from Mukhtasar Zad al-Ma'ad, the English translation, page 383. Guys, pay attention. Let me read it. And in the words of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq to Urwa, suck Allah's clitoris. There is permissibility of speaking plainly the name of the private parts if there is some benefit to be gained thereby, just as he, Muhammad, permitted a plain response to the one who made the claim of the Jahiliyyah by saying, bite your father's penis. And for every situation, there is a fitting saying. Who would have thunk it, David? All right, now, uh, uh, Sam, I, I want to I want to discuss that for just a moment. But um, uh, I mean, didn't the didn't the unbelievers of Mecca even come to Muhammad's uncle to try and 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 work out uh, work out a scenario where he would stop making fun of their gods? And didn't didn't Muhammad? Refuse? Weren't they the ones yes. who are trying to be like Adnan says they should be? Hey, let's just stop making fun of each other. Let's stop making fun of of, of the gods and, and so on. Here, can, can we stop? Can we stop doing that? And Muhammad is the one who yes, refused that. Absolutely. So, so that's kind of one thing. But guys, do, don't miss don't miss this point, right? Sam, Abu Bakr said uh, was making fun of the pagans and says, "Go suck a lot's clitoris." Now, a lot. Okay. Did, did they love a lot? Did they love the pagan goddess they a lot? They loved and adored Alat al Uzamanat. They loved these goddesses. And yet, Abu Bakr's response to a, a completely reasonable request and a, a completely reasonable and rational point by one of the pagans, his response is to say, in effect, go perform oral sex on your goddess. Right, right, and not, right. notice, Muhammad is saying, go bite your father's penis. Abu yeah. Bakr, go perform oral sex on your on your goddess. This, these are like the nastiest, most insulting ways you could possibly talk to someone. That's how Muhammad and his companions responded to the pagans. And yet we have Adnan Rashid here saying, that's the wrong 
way to go about it. You'll never reach people like that. I, Adnan Rashid, have the true way to reach people, and I condemn anyone who would do it like that. And he still doesn't realize, Sam, according to uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 65 of the Quran, you can have no resistance against Muhammad's decisions. Well, Muhammad has displayed in his life how you're supposed okay. to respond. Surah 33, verse 21 says that Muhammad is the pattern yeah. of conduct. And Muhammad, yeah. the pattern of conduct, showed how you should react act to people's false religious beliefs and yet Adnan says no don't follow Muhammad he's completely wicked and immoral I reject Muhammad's decisions about how to do these things and I still don't realize how many different ways I've become an apostate what yeah. else do you have for us I gotta read this part because folks Muhammad didn't just insult unbelievers the hadith say Muslim and I have an article on this folks you need to listen to this and by the grace of Jesus make a clip and David is gonna make a clip out of this Muhammad was such a nasty person, he would insult and curse his companions who loved him. But then Muhammad justified it. Let me read it. Okay, this is from Sai Muslim, so you guys don't take my word for it. Sai Muslim, number 6285. Even the subheading. Subheading. Guys, let me read the subheading for this particular section of Hadith. Chapter 23. He upon whom Allah's apostle invoked curse, whereas he in fact did not deserve it. It would be a source of reward and mercy for him. So let me read. Aisha reported that two persons visited Allah's messenger and both of them talked about a thing of which I'm not aware, but that annoyed him, annoyed Muhammad, and he invoked curse upon them and hurled malediction. Not only did he curse them, Allah curse you, he insulted them. He cussed them out. And when they went out, I said, Allah's messenger. The good would reach everyone, but it would not reach these two. In other words, he's thinking he's a prophet. You just damned these poor souls. You cursed them and you cussed them out. He said, why so? I said, because you have invoked curse and hurled maledictions upon both of them. He said, don't you know that I have made a condition with my Lord saying this? Oh Allah, I'm a human being. And that for a Muslim upon whom I invoke a curse or hurl malediction, Make it a source, source of purity and reward. Guys, understand what Muhammad just did to justify his insults? I made a deal with Allah. Allah, if I hurl a malediction, I curse someone, I cuss him out, and I invoke your wrath on him, doesn't deserve it? Can you then turn that into blessing? In other words, Muhammad justifies his temper tantrums by saying, hey, don't worry about it. David, if I cuss you out, it's going to be a blessing. So let me cuss you out. Let me wish death on you. Let me wish hell on you and your children. And the more I do, the greater the blessing. Gee, can you cuss me out some more? But here's the worst one. In the Hadith, Sahih Muslim, number 6297. A young orphan girl, Muhammad wished early death on her and she started weeping bitterly. Let me read it because it's worth reading. Sahih Muslim, number 6297. Anas bin Malik reported that there was an orphan girl. Poor girl. Folks, don't forget Muhammad was supposed to be an orphan. If anyone should have sympathized with this poor girl, it should have been him because he was orphan, right? There was an orphan girl with Umm Sulaim, who was the mother of Anas. Allah's messenger saw that orphan girl and said, oh, it is you? You have grown young. Now, what a stupid man. And you tell me to respect this man? Notice what he says to this orphan girl. May you not advance in years. May you, in other words, may you not get older, may you die. That slave girl returned to Umm Sulaim weeping. Um Salam said, oh daughter, what is the matter with you? She said, Allah's apostle has invoked curse upon me that I should not grow in age and thus I would never grow in age, or she said, in my length of life. Um Salam went out wrapping her headdress hurriedly until she met Allah's messenger. He said to her, Um Salam, what is the matter with you? She said, Allah's apostle, you invoke curse upon my orphan girl. He said, Um Salam, what is that? She said, she, the girl states, you have cursed her, saying that she might not grow in age or grow in life. Allah's messenger smiled. Surprise, Um Salaam. Allah's messenger smiled and then said, Um Salaam, don't you know that I've made this term with my Lord? And the term with my Lord is that I said to him, I'm a human being and I am pleased just as a human being is pleased. And I lose my temper just as a human being loses temper. So for any person from among my ummah whom I curse and he in no way deserves it, let that, O Lord, be a source of purification and purity and nearness to Allah on the day of resurrection. So David, I'm not going to curse you. I'm going to insult your wife and your kids and you better love it because I made a deal with my Lord. 
If I say you are a wicked, ugly looking kafir, may you die before the next year. That's going to be a blessing, brother. So say, thank me. Thank me, David. Maybe, maybe, the, uh, maybe the same applies to Allah, so that when he's calling Jews and Christians the worst of creatures in Surah 98, verse 6, it's actually praising us, right? Um, I want to add a, a couple a quick quotations here from the history of At-Tabri, volume 6. This is from page 93. Totally contradicts what many Muslims believe. The Messenger of God proclaimed God's message openly and declared Islam publicly to his tribesmen. When he did so, they did not withdraw from him or reject him in any way, as far as I had heard, until he spoke of their gods and denounced them. When he did this, they took exception to it and united in opposition and hostility to him. Notice, it specifically says that the pagans had no problem with Muhammad preaching Islam. They had no problem with it. They only objected when Muhammad started attacking and denouncing their gods and goddesses. Pages 94 to 95. They sent one of their number, whose name, uh, whose name was Al-Mutalib, to Abu Talib to ask permission for them to enter. He said, here are the sheikhs and nobles of your tribe asking permission to visit you. He told him to ask them to come in. And when they had done so, they said, Abu Talib, you are our elder and chief. So give us justice against your nephew and order him to desist from reviling our gods and we will leave him to his God. Notice what they're saying. Stop making fun of our gods and goddesses and we'll leave him. We'll leave him to his Islam. He can go around preaching. Just stop mocking our gods and goddesses. And here we have pages 101 to 102. Um, a Muslim asked, what was the worst attack you ever saw by the Quraysh upon the messenger of God when they openly showed their enmity to him? He replied, I was with them when their nobles assembled one day in the Hijr and discussed the messenger of God. They said, we have never seen the like of what we have endured from this man. He has derided our traditional values, abused our forefathers, reviled our religion, caused division among us, and insulted our gods. We have endured a great deal from him. So Adnan, he condemns it. He condemns criticizing wow. people's religious beliefs, criticizing uh, criticizing, we, we don't do this, but critic, you know, if you were to say something about someone's mother or someone's father or something like that, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't mock people's gods. You shouldn't mock people that they love. And yet we've already seen, we've already seen, uh, Muhammad cursing people. He curse even, he called on curses, even on his own followers. Uh, he told, he told people to, to go bite their father's penises. His closest companion, Abu Bakr, said, uh, go suck your god's clitoris, yeah. go perform oral yeah. sex on your goddess. And the description that they had from people who kept trying to reason with him, like Adnan, these were the Adnans of the time, Muhammad, could you please stop just making fun of people's religion? That's not nice. That's not, a, that's not the way to win people, man. That's not the way to show people that you're right. Going around making fun of people's gods and goddesses. Can't we just stop all this mockery and, and, and get along? And, and then you can, you, can, you can have your religion, man. We don't have a problem with it. Just stop mocking our gods and goddesses. And what did they say? They said, we have never seen the like of what we have endured from this man. So they, they have never encountered this, not from Jews, not from Christians, not from pagans, no one. They've never seen this. We have never seen the like of what we have endured from this man. He has derided our traditional values, abused our forefathers, thought you're, thought you're not supposed to do that, reviled our religion, thought you're not supposed to do that, caused division among us, and insulted our gods. But I thought you're not supposed to do any of that, according to Adnan. So once again, Adnan has condemned his own God, his own right. prophet, never realizes, his own, his own prophet's companions, he never ever realizes it. Why? Because Islam is just built upon this foundation of hypocrisy where we get to do whatever we want, but you have to obey all these rules that we would never dream of applying to ourselves or our prophet. Adnan, that time is over. We're holding exactly. you to the standard of your prophet, whom you've just condemned. We're holding you to the standard of your God, whom you've just condemned. We're holding you to the standard of your prophet's companions, whom you've just condemned. You apostatize every single video you post. You apostatize over and over and over again. Our job is simply to point it out and watch your religion self-destruct.
Glory to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who will take Muslims captive for his glory, for their salvation. Be magnified, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen. In Jesus' name, amen.